Zhu Zilong had known for a long, long time that he was a disgusting monster. Even on the southern border, where monsters flourished, he was considered a monster among monsters. Back then, it hadn't been called Zhu Zilong, for it had possessed no name. Generally speaking, upon sighting a half-man, half-snake thing slithering about on the ground, no one would be bored enough to think of giving it a name. Even if they were bored enough, the southern border demons preferred to give it a couple of kicks, stab its tail, or study this weird little thing for a weak spot to see if you could even beat it to death. Its daily schedule was very simple. Slither, look for water. Slither, look for food. Slither, bite and scrimmage with other beast-shaped demons. Though it lacked an impressive appearance, when it came to fighting, it wasn't at too much of a disadvantage. On the contrary, not only was its body flexible and agile, its disgusting appearance often disturbed and distracted its opponent during battle. Therefore, this weird little thing, being both ugly and a pain, was extremely unpopular on the southern border. Upon seeing it for the first time, even an educated noble like Tianlongjun stared it up and down for a while before he said with awe sincerity, It's so ugly. As was to be expected, the black armoured generals standing apathetically behind him said nothing. Far too ugly, Tianlongjun repeated. It was uncertain who he was complaining to. There was too much emphasis in that sentence. The weird little thing shrank away. Then again, it felt, somehow, that this esteemed noble's criticism held no true disgust. It had seen gazes rife with disgust many, many times, and they hadn't been like this. Tianlongjun gracefully shifted into a half-crouch, staring at it. Do you, uh... Remember your mother? It had seen gazes rife with disgust many, many times, and they hadn't been like this. Tianlongjun gracefully shifted into a half crouch, staring at it. Do you remember your mother? It shook its head. Oh, said Tianlongjun. That's good too. If I had that kind of mother... I too would prefer not to remember her. It didn't know what to say. Of course, even if it had known, it wouldn't have been able to say it. All it could do was release a raspy hiss. Tianlongjun gave it a smile. However, there are some things you should be told. Your mother is dead. I'm her older brother. To fulfill her dying wish, I've come to see you. Demons were cold-blooded. When it came to the death of a blood relative, any one of them could speak of the event cavalierly, glossing over it with a single line. The weird little thing didn't feel anything in particular. It only stiffly nodded out of habit. Tianlongjun seemed to find the stall. All right, he said dryly. I've seen to her her last request. All of these are your subordinates. From here on out, this plot of land will be yours. The subordinates he referred to were those hundreds of black armoured generals. Although these things had no mind and couldn't think, they feared neither pain nor death and would never stop nor feel fatigue. They formed an invincible, all-conquering army and Tianlongjun had indeed handed them off to a half-man, half-snake monster on a whim. Tianlongjun stood up and patted the non-existent dust from his hem, then turned and left. In an unexpected development, the weird little thing wavered in place before wriggling its way after him. Tianlongjun looked back, bewildered. What are you following me for? The snake man dared not move. At the sight of this, Tianlongjun took another step forward, and at once again 
began to slither behind him, squirming. Tianlangjing stopped in place and asked in confusion, Can you not understand me? This scene repeated once, twice, then three times. In the end, Tianlangjing simply ignored the thing, going on his way with his hands clasped behind his back. The snake man clumsily tagged along after him. Tianlongjun's was a special existence. His blood was noble and his status extraordinary. So naturally, he had no shortage of enemies. As the snake man followed, countless rabble came to make trouble for him. Despite Tianlongjun clearly having no need for outside help, the snake man always stepped up to fight with all its might, offering its mega martial ability. This happened numerous times until Tianlongjun finally couldn't ignore the thing's existence. He sent the battered and bruised snake man two glances and delivered his assessment. Still too ugly. Wounded, the snake man shrank back. Tianlongjun smiled again. And also stubborn. That's not very personable. Even after following him all this time, the snake man had never once flinched back from the many difficulties and obstacles. But when met with this unkind evaluation, it was filled with the impulse to turn and run, no, slither away. It never would have guessed that in the exact moment, Tianlongjun would place a bare hand on its head and sigh. Both ugly and stubborn. I can't stand to watch this any longer. A strange and gentle flow, both warm and cold, coursed through all its limbs and bones. But how could it have limbs? The snake man realized very quickly that, without its knowledge, four perfectly whole limbs had sprouted from its once deformed torso. On top of that, ten fingers, things he had found exquisite yet unattainable, had appeared upon his new palms. It was the body of a youth. The youth's age was around fifteen to sixteen, its complexion fair and figure slender, healthy and whole. Tianlongjun moved his hand away, his pitch-black irises reflecting a white silhouette. While holding the youth's chin, he said, I think this looks a bit better. Any thoughts? The other opened his mouth, wanting to speak. He'd finally managed to obtain a man's form, yet no matter how he tried, his mouth and tongue failed to obey his commands. The moment he opened his mouth and a slightly sluggish sound escaped, a warm liquid slipped out of his eyes. Though Tianlongjun firmly believed that his lord could do no wrong, he secretly thought that his lord's brain actually wasn't too sharp. Even after receiving tacit permission to stay at Tianlongjun's side, for a long period of time, Zhu Zilong had no name. Tianlongjun didn't often command the people around him, so he didn't need to call the youth by name. Hence, they passed many months in a muddle. Then, one day, Tianlongjun wanted to find a certain poetry collection from the human realm. He overturned boxes and cabinets but couldn't find it, and it wasn't until he was forced to call someone for help that he suddenly remembered he had a nephew whose presence was about equivalent to that of a patch of empty air and was currently sitting in the corner of his study. But after calling out, Hey... He couldn't think of what to say next. Tianlongjun frowned and thought for a while, then said, Have I never asked for your name? My lord, this subordinate has no name. His nephew honestly replied, How can you have no name? Tianlongjun asked, bewildered. That's so strange. Then what am I supposed to call you? Whatever my lord wishes to call me will do. After saying this, the youth walked to the bookcase 
and pulled out the poetry collection from where Tianjun had randomly stuffed it after finishing his read. Then he presented it to his lord with both hands. Tianjun was most satisfied. As he took the collection, he said, "Not having a name is not a problem. We can simply give you one." After flipping through a couple of pages at random with his head lowered, he chose a phrase on a whim. Let's call you, Zhu Ziqun. With his sharp eyes, he'd given the text a skim or two. By tender green willows over placid river waters, I listen to my lover sing his song on the shore. The sun rises from the east. As rain dims the west, here clear skies and dark mingle in concord. Bamboo branch song, Zhuzi Ci. His nephew shook his head. You don't like it? Asked Tianlongjun. He handed him the book. So picky. Then choose one yourself. His nephew didn't know whether to laugh or cry. My lord, only nobles can use such a title. So particular, even at your tender age," said Tianlongjun. "Fine, then we'll call you Zhu Zilong." Everything Tianlongjun did was done flippantly. He'd flippantly given his nephew a life, and he flippantly gave him a name. And at this moment and this place, due to him, Zhu Zilong was flippantly born. But no matter how careless, how childish his behavior, he was still Tianlongjun, the person for whom Zhu Zilong would brave both fire and flood, for whom he would sacrifice ten thousand lives. One could scarcely imagine that Tianlongjun was also pondering whether his nephew had spent too many years as a snake and had therefore become a little foolish. Said nephew refused to call him quote, "uncle," and insisted on calling him "my lord." He refused to go be a carefree lordling on the southern border and instead insisted on following Tianlongjun to be an errand boy. He even refused a good quality name, insisting on demoting himself. He truly was a bit foolish, but a brain that wasn't sharp was a lifelong problem, so it couldn't be helped. Let him do as he wishes. Tianlongjun truly loved any and everything to do with humans. He probably felt that demons were a cold and boring lot, yet. When it came to humans, he nursed a strange passion for a beautiful mental image of that foreign race, almost to an exaggerated extent. Any time he went anywhere, his most common destination were the borderlands. He'd pass the boundary markers, and on his short stays, he'd drink some wine while listening to stories. But on his long stays. It wasn't out of the question for him to spend a whole year, or even more, touring the human realm. Tianlongjun probably wasn't the type to enjoy being followed. He often dismissed his black armored generals in the hundreds or thousands. But as far as Zhu Zilong was concerned, first off, he didn't talk much, and second, he didn't get in the way. He only silently followed. After Tianlongjun, so it wouldn't have been very different if he hadn't existed at all. Sometimes he helped out by paying the bill or running an errand, and it was both convenient and considerate. So he didn't particularly annoy his uncle. Even when he was meeting with that maiden Su, neither of them minded Zhu Zilong tagging along. As if of one mind, they both pretended Zhu Zilong was a real snake. Who could understand neither normal conversation nor more intimate exchanges? They focused on each other and acted like he wasn't there. Only once did Tianlongjun try to drive Zhu Zilong away, even telling him to quote, "get lost." As someone who'd always pursued grace and refinement, 
had been some of the crudest language he'd ever used. Bai Lu Mountain. As for what Tianlongjing and Su Xi Yan's first meeting was like, Zhu Zilong didn't witness it himself. At the time, he had, at Tianlongjing's request, been standing in line for a famous author's newest work. Initially, he felt no curiosity about their meeting, but after it happened, Tianlongjing fell into an odd state for a long time. While Zhu Zilong was acting as a snake-shaped transportation device, Tianlongjing said from his seat on his head, Hmm, in the plays I've read, maidens of the human realm are unanimously gentle as water, considerate and charming. Hence, I thought that all maidens would be like this. So I've been lied to. Zhu Zilong, one can't read too many plays. Then, another time his lord, who'd conclusively forgotten about not reading too many plays, was enjoying another with relish as he said, Do I look like someone who can't carry things? Or someone who's so poor they can't even afford the trip home? Then, when Zhu Zilong was doing his laundry, Tianlongjun crouched gracefully beside him while saying, Zhu Zilong, what do you think of my face? Is it not handsome? Typically speaking, shouldn't anyone who behold my face immediately transform into a young woman tenderly budding into love? Zhu Zilong shook out the clothes he'd wrung and hung them on a bamboo pole, respectfully agreeing. At the same time, he was thinking of how he'd read quite a few of his lord's nonsensical plays together with him. He didn't know what other people were like, but the way his lord was acting now was rather akin to the love-struck teenage girls in those books. Therefore, he inevitably became curious. In Zhu Zilong's imagination... A maiden who entered an abandoned town filled with troublemaking demons all by herself, who, while dispatching evil spirits, had told Tianlongjun to sing and play his music further away so he wouldn't get in the way, and who, after dispatching them, had handed Tianlongjun three silvers, saying that it was money for his trip home. Well, even if she wasn't burly and heavy set, she should at least look like a martial arts master with fierce and ferocious eyes. For all that, when he finally met the culprit behind Tianlongjun's bout of philosophical soul-searching, which had tormented Zhu Zilong for many days, he realized that the culprit in question was not quite like what he'd envisioned. Tianlongjun loved wandering the human realm, and wandering the human realm required spending money. Yet, he never remembered to bring any. So, Zhu Zilong could only remember for him. However, Tianlongjun had no concept of money's value, and therefore he knew no restraint. Whenever he felt gallant, he slapped down thousands at once, and it was impossible for Zhu Zilong to stop him. With these spending habits, things would have been difficult, even if they'd had a mountain of gold or a sea of silver. Thus, in the end, they constantly ended up broke. Just as these two tourists were standing penniless in the street, a tall woman dressed in black strolled by, sword on her back. Hold, said Tianlongjun. As their shoulders brushed, that woman slightly raised her eyebrow, a mocking smile curling a corner of her lips, and she did indeed halt. If one cites an injustice while on the road said Tianlongjun. Should they not draw their sword to give aid? <laughs> if this is a matter of drawing her sword, this humble one will consider it. <laughs>